Hi, I'm Trisha Soderstrom with Abounding in Hope with Lime, and today I'm going to share with you my Lime story. So thanks for joining me today. I'm Trisha with Abounding in Hope with Lime.com, and I'm going to share with you a little bit about my story about how I came to have Lyme disease and how it impacted my entire family. Before I start with my story, I just want to tell you what Lyme disease is. It's a bacterial infection that's usually transmitted by the black-legged deer tick. However, many researchers are finding that other biting insects like biting flies and even mosquitoes can also transmit Lyme disease. It's important to understand that Lyme disease can become a chronic infection after four to six weeks if it's not treated from the initial tick bite. The problem is, is that many people, they never even see a tick bite. They don't get the initial rash, they don't have flu-like symptoms, and that's what happened to me, and I ended up becoming chronically ill with Lyme disease and co-infections. So it all started back in 2006 when I was pregnant with my fourth child, and I began having very unusual fatigue and I also began having pain in my, in my joint, in my hip, and like sciatic nerve pain. Uh, my doctor just explained that it was because I was older and because I was pregnant and that these things were to be expected. So I just kind of blew it off a little bit and tried to do the best I could. But once my son was born, my symptoms increased in intensity and severity, and I even got new symptoms. So by the time he was born, I couldn't stay awake. Like I would sleep all day, all night, and I couldn't stay awake. And I never heard him cry in the middle of the night, which I knew was a problem because every mom of a newborn baby hears her baby. And he was my fourth, so I knew something wasn't right. The other symptoms that I had were uh, heart palpitations, joint pain, and muscle pain. I began to have increased symptoms over the course of the two years that I was visiting specialists and different doctors and getting lab work done. Um, I was going everywhere to try to figure out what was wrong with me. When I really got scared was when I started losing my memory. And it kind of just happened all of a sudden, like I realized I couldn't remember things from my childhood or growing up I couldn't remember and I have a really great memory I just I couldn't remember these things and I started having difficulty with word finding which sometimes still happens I guess that could be partly age or maybe there's something still going on there but um, word finding I would say words that didn't really fit into a sentence that I was speaking or I just flat out could not figure out what I was trying to say I would get lost um, driving my kids to soccer and I would just completely not even know where I was even though I was in my hometown. And this was really, really frightening. None of the doctors that I had gone to could tell me what was going on. So for my feet, they treated me for plantar fasciitis. Um, for my fatigue, they just said, you know, you need to stop drinking so much coffee and get more sleep and I was having gut problems and I was told that it was all stress because they couldn't find anything wrong. And ultimately, every doctor that I continued to visit would tell me that my symptoms were psychosomatic. So I was really like scared, you know, my husband and I prayed about it. We weren't really sure what was going on and it was a very scary time. And a friend of mine recommended that I go see her chiropractor because I was having really bad burning neck pain and, and just um, joint pain in my neck and in my shoulder and in my lower back. And it just, I just felt like I was falling apart. So I honestly thought that my chiropractor broke my hip and broke my shoulder. That's how severe the pain was. But I had gone to my primary and gotten the x-rays and nothing was broken and there wasn't anything wrong. So she gave me muscle relaxers, which didn't even touch the pain. Um, and she gave me some other medication, some pain medicine. 
and I continued to take high doses of ibuprofen and just just trying to survive and I had four children now I had my my three girls and my baby son and I was trying to somehow work through the pain and the brain fog and the lack of memory um, and also homeschooling and trying to do all of this with all of these very scary symptoms that I was having. I spent so much time sleeping on the couch and it was very scary because my oldest daughter would come shake me awake and I would be in this deep, deep sleep. I just can't even explain the, the type of fatigue that I had and realize that it had been two hours that I had been napping. Thankfully my girls were very responsible and they were very helpful but it was very scary to me. So I ended up visiting my friend's chiropractor because I didn't want to go back to my chiropractor. I thought he had injured me even though I couldn't get an x-ray to prove it. So I was treated by my friend's chiropractor for four weeks and he finally said, you know, Trisha, I think you need to get a Lyme disease test. Everything that I'm doing is making you worse and your pain is migrating and that kind of tells me that you might have a, a Lyme infection. And I just kind of laughed. I was like, you know, I've never pulled a tick off of myself. Like when I was a kid, yeah, I had ticks, you know, when we would go camping or um, doing things outside, but I don't recall as an adult ever pulling a tick off of me. And I wasn't really sure I wanted to go get this Lyme test. I didn't know anything about Lyme. I thought it was just, um, you know, something that you got from a tick. You would get a bullseye rash, you would get some joint pain, and then that was it. And I thought it would just go away because that's what I had read. But I decided to go ahead and go to my primary. I needed a cholesterol test and a physical, so I went ahead to my primary, made that appointment, and uh, she went ahead and wrote the script for me to get a Lyme test along with my cholesterol. And I went to the lab and waited for like a week to get my results, waited a second week. I finally called and found out that they lost my labs. So I had to call my doctor and get the labs again, go get the testing. And then she called me one day and she said, Trisha, I think we need to talk about your Lyme tests. It's showing that you might have a old Lyme infection or exposure to Lyme, but you don't have the five CDC bands that they require for me to say that you're positive. So I think I would really like to just treat this as a stress issue. And then she proceeded to say, you know, you do have four kids and you're trying to homeschool. So I think you're under a lot of stress. You know, I just wanted to scream. I was so upset with her. And I said, excuse me, but I am having symptoms that are totally not related to stress and something is wrong with me. So she said, well, we have this doctor down the hall who's been specifically treating people with Lyme and you can make an appointment with her. So I did. And when I went to see this doctor down the hall, um, I had to wait for like over an hour to see her because she was very, very busy taking care of Lyme patients. And at that time, I didn't understand that. I didn't understand that you would need to have an hour long appointment. Um, so when I went to see her, she looked over my labs and she said, sure enough, I had chronic Lyme disease. But she told me that she thought she could get me better in four months and that I shouldn't be upset about it, that everything will be fine. So she prescribed some antibiotics. She handed me this really thick packet from Dr. Joseph Burriscano about how to treat Lyme disease. She told me to read it carefully and reread it until I almost had it memorized because it was very important for me to understand what was in there. So I did, I read all of that as best I could with my brain fog and my you know, limited cognitive abilities at the time. And I was so, excited. I remember going to my car after I left the doctor's office so happy that I finally had a diagnosis. Now some people go um, 7 to 10 to 15 years before they ever get diagnosed with Lyme disease or any of the tick-borne infections because regular doctors and even infectious disease doctors are not understanding or 
for whatever reason, they're not on top of it when it comes to tick-borne diseases. They're not diagnosing it correctly. They're um, misdiagnosing people with things that they don't have. I was diagnosed with chronic um, fatigue syndrome and uh, fibromyalgia three times. So, you know, something has to change in the Lyme medical world. These doctors need to be educated about tick-borne diseases. But right now, the way it stands, unless you have a really great doctor who's, you know, on the up and up, you're gonna have to find a Lyme literate doctor or a naturopathic physician or a functional doctor, um, even a holistic alternative doctor. There are some very Lyme specific tests that you can get through Igenix, um, and there's many other labs that you can use. I have those listed on my blog. I'll put a link down below. So I started my treatment with antibiotics and as I, as I began taking these antibiotics, I thought I was dying. I became very, very weak. I became very disoriented. I had um, just increased fatigue, increased symptoms and I was scared. I really thought that my husband was gonna have to take me to the hospital because I really just felt like my whole body was shutting down on me. So it turns out that was a Herxheimer reaction, which is basically where the die off of the bacteria in your body is just too much and it begins producing um, toxins, which can increase your symptoms or even give you new symptoms. So that's what was going on with me when I first started. I, be, I was taking the antibiotics for a while and I started realizing that my second daughter was having symptoms very similar to what I was having, except hers were milder. She was having feet pain and fatigue and joint pain and just really not herself and just really struggling. And she was only, I think she was um, eight or nine and i thought at first you know maybe she was mimicking me but then i i thought no you know kids don't usually do that so i took her to my pediatrician and she confirmed she said usually when children complain like this they're not pretending so we tested her um and we tested her just through lab core and her test came out positive for lyme disease she actually had um the bands that stated that she had chronic Lyme disease. So I took her to the doctor that I had been seeing and we put her on antibiotics and same thing, she started having a Herxheimer reaction. So fast forward a little bit and my oldest daughter was diagnosed with Lyme and co-infections. My third daughter, when she was six years old, began having um, facial and motor tics, and she was having OCD and anxiety, very mild. It just kind of came out of nowhere, but it wasn't very severe at first. But the older she got, the worse it got. And I spent over two years trying to get a diagnosis for her. And because Lyme tests through Lyme-specific labs like Igenix are so expensive, I just couldn't shell out you know, $2,000 to get all of my kids tested. So I tried to go the route through traditional labs. I ended up taking my third daughter to my Lyme doctor who at the, this time had left the primary care practice and had gone to work with another Lyme doctor. So she was able to take my daughter in and get the testing for her. We went through medical diagnostics labs in New Jersey and my insurance actually paid for that. And we found that she did also have Lyme and Babesia and Bartonella. The Babesia we were all diagnosed with a few years after we started treatment. Um, so the process of all of this was a bit overwhelming and then one day my husband came home and um, said I think I need to get a Lyme test because I'm having trouble word finding and I'm really tired and I'm having you know all these symptoms. So we got him tested with Igenix and sure enough his Lyme titers were super high. So here we are, all of us with Lyme. The only one that we hadn't tested was my son, who was having um, symptoms 
which I didn't realize at the time because he was a baby, but he would wake up um, with severe, just screaming, like, like he was in very, very bad pain. And as he got older and he was able to talk, we found that he was having really bad leg pain. And I began tracking this from the time he was a newborn. Turns out it was every single month. I could almost tell my husband, this is the day he's gonna wake up and scream. And I was always right. It was always like two to three days and then he would, you know, it would get better and he would be okay. So it was just a really overwhelming time for me because I was sick, I was trying to get myself better and now I have my kids who are sick and I just started consuming every book, every resource, trying to find things online, which back then there weren't a whole lot of things um, to go to and the Lyme support groups were all secret in the Yahoo groups. Everybody that I talked to that had had Lyme or that was in these groups, they were all sick and had been sick for years. And some of them had been sick for 15 to 20 years. And I was so discouraged and really just scared because I did not want to be sick that long and I sure didn't want my kids to be sick that long. So I just began this quest of healing and a quest for figuring out how to get us all better. So with Lyme, to get better, it costs a lot of money and it's all out of pocket because like I said before, regular doctors who take insurance, they don't deal with Lyme. They don't know about it. They, if they do know about it, they, don't, um, they won't treat you and uh, insurance won't cover it because there are no codes you know, to process this, to submit it to insurance. And so basically you're all on your own. Um, back then we did the antibiotics and we weren't getting better. Now we improved, I will say that, we improved quite a bit, especially my husband and I. My children did not improve, they just kept getting worse and worse, especially my daughter with pans. And I just, I knew that this wasn't right. I, I'm, I knew that there had to be some other way. We were focusing on nutrition. We were focusing on getting rid of toxins in our home. Um, I didn't know so much about mold back then, but I, I don't think we had mold in, our, in that home that we lived in. But it was just really, really a difficult time trying to get the help. My doctor only really treated with antibiotics. She didn't talk about nutrition. She didn't really know too much about supplements or herbs. And so I had a real difficult time um, figuring it all out. I had to do all this research on my own. I did have a friend who was in school to become a naturopath, so I would talk to her and bounce things off of her a lot. And eventually I decided, you know, I was going to start taking matters into my own hands. So I researched and studied Dr. Steven Buhner's work using herbs to treat Lyme and co-infections. And my oldest daughter, I didn't tell you this, but she didn't want to be treated with antibiotics. So I never took her to our doctor to be treated with antibiotics. She saw how sick her sisters were. They weren't getting better. There were too many side effects. Um, it just made symptoms worse. So she didn't want to go through that. And I respected that, she was 12 at the time, so that's when I started really researching other alternatives. I did connect with a woman who was learning to become a homeopathic um, physician, and we treated my daughter for a time with homeopathy, but I don't think it was aggressive enough and I don't think um, we had the correct treatment protocol for her. So I ended up starting my daughter and even the rest of us giving us the herbs that Steven Buhner recommended. And in the process of all of this, I had my daughter with a therapist, so we were learning cognitive behavioral therapy. Um, we were just learning some skills. I needed this so I could figure out how to interact with her and not set her off and trigger her. Um, so we were doing all of these things I even tried psych meds for my daughter before I knew what I was dealing with and I'll just tell you right now that doesn't work for a child with pans or pandas. At least it didn't for mine and I haven't talked to any other moms who say that it works. 
But we had gotten to this place where my daughter with her PANS symptoms were getting worse. They were overrunning our home. It was exhausting me because she was never sleeping. She was afraid of everything. And my doctor finally just said, you know, I can't get her better. I don't know what to do for her. And then her therapist said, you know, she's not really putting in the effort to do her homework and practice her skills. So I don't think that we should really keep continuing on because it's not making a difference. And when I talked to my Lyme doctor, I was really, really discouraged that she was just giving up on my daughter because she had children. And I asked her, you know, what would you do? Because she wanted me just to put my daughter back on psych meds and just, you know, hope for the best. But it was so severe. And yeah, after I seven or eight years, I didn't have the energy anymore. And I remember just feeling lost and hopeless and my place to go because I didn't want my kids to see me crying. I would drive up to the grocery store and sit at the far end of the parking lot and I would cry in my car. And I would talk to God and just pray. And I remember doing this on this one particular day. It was pouring down raining and I was just crying. I just felt like my tears were blending with the rain and asked God to please help me. I didn't have the energy anymore to take care of her. So basically that very Sunday, I was talking to someone at my church and asking for a prayer and they prayed with me, but then they said, you know, I want you to meet somebody. So they took me over to meet this woman at church who is a registered nurse. And turns out her son had gone through exactly the same thing that my daughter was going through. And she recommended that I see her doctor who treats with homeopathy. So I took her information, you know, I asked her a lot of questions and I think I even contacted her contacted her through email and then I just kind of put her information on my desk and really thought you know I don't know how homeopathy is going to help us if antibiotics can't help us I don't see how homeopathy will but something just kept gnawing at me and then I think it was like a month later I decided to call this doctor so I called and talked to them about what they do and how they treat and how they test and I was just so exhausted. I was so tired of doing all the research. I was so tired of putting in all this effort on my own. I'm not a doctor. Um, and I was doing all this work, you know? So I decided, you know, it's this or nothing because like there's nothing else for us to do. So I put my daughter's name on the list. There was a six month waiting list, but I told him I was desperate. I told him how severe she is. And if there's any cancellations, I would come in a heartbeat. So turns out there was a cancellation and we got in much sooner than anticipated. And when we went to see this doctor, my daughter and I, I brought her two three ring binders of labs and all the things that she had been treated with and all of the Lyme information for just for my daughter. He didn't even ask to look at them. And he, he had his own questionnaire that he had her fill out she and I filled it out together. And then he looked that over and he asked her some questions and he asked me some questions. And then he looked at her and he said, do you want to get better? And she said, yeah. And he said, well, I can get you better. And she and I just both started crying because we had felt abandoned. We felt like nobody was going to help us. And here this doctor is telling us he can get her better. And I really doubted it because once I saw how he did auricular testing, and he had all these bottles of homeopathic remedies. There, I just didn't see how this was going to get her better. But after about nine weeks, she did start to show some improvement after a very severe, um, they call it a healing crisis, she did get worse first. But then she started to show some improvement and she started to be able to do some things that she couldn't do before. And as the couple months went by before her next appointment, my husband and I were just like, something's going on here. Like this stuff is really working for her. So maybe we should put the rest of us on the list. So one by one, each of us went on his waiting list and got to him for our evaluations and our treatments. And we began to get better, finally. No more antibiotics, no more 
supplements. We did take some supplements, but not the boxes and boxes of supplements that you end up taking when you're on antibiotics to try to counteract all the things that the antibiotics does to you. So I can tell you now that my entire family has been off of treatment for, um, depending on who in the family we're talking about, but it's been between two to four years. And everybody's been doing really well. My daughter with the PANS, she was able to get her driver's license. She was able to be a nanny. Um, she has a full-time job. She goes to college. You know, she graduated from high school. My girls graduated from high school. And those were things that I didn't think that they would ever be able to do because of how sick they were. But now they're doing great and they're doing very well with their health. They take care of themselves. They eat very healthy. They um, exercise is so important. And so my whole family has been doing really well. Now I've had more struggles, I think, because I've been the caretaker and just have more sensitivities with um, mold and reactivated Epstein-Barr and just some other things like that. So I have had my, my fair share of moments and uh, just not feeling well. But for the most part, you know, if you were to look at our family, you would think that we were all very, very healthy and very active. And they don't have to visit doctors. Um, they don't get sick all the time. You know, they're just really doing very well in life. I wanted to share my story. I share this on my blog. I go into more detail and I just share my journey of things that I've been going through. But I just think it's really important to help other people who are suffering with Lyme disease because a lot of times when people get better from Lyme disease, they kind of just move on with their life and they don't tell other people that they've gotten better and they don't offer that encouragement and that hope to people who really desperately need it. And so my sister in 2015 asked me to start a blog, which I didn't really want to do, but she needed a place for um, people in her community who had Lyme or who thought they had Lyme where they could go and learn about the disease. Now back then, you know, there weren't as many blogs, there weren't as many resources, but now we have so many and I'm so thankful for that. But I think where my blog comes in is that I want to offer you the hope that you can get through this and the hope that you can get better. And while you're going through it, that you can really trust God, go to him with every need and every care, and that he will help you through it. Um, if it weren't for my faith in God, I don't know how I would have gotten through those very, very difficult and dark times. So I hope you'll visit my blog. I hope I'll hear from you. Leave a comment down below if this encouraged you. And if you have any questions, um, you can reach out to me through my blog. I have a contact page there. And I just wanted to say, hang in there. If you're just now starting on this journey, there are so many new resources and new studies out. There are many more doctors available who are treating this disease, the tick-borne diseases as a whole, and um, who can help you to get better. It is important to focus on your whole body. So you want to focus not only on the tick-borne diseases, but primarily on building up your immune system. And also, don't forget that your emotions play a huge role in your health. Um, so don't forget that you have your mind, your body, and your soul to work on as you're healing from chronic tick-borne diseases. Thanks for joining me today. Don't forget you can find more information about me and Lyme disease, homeschooling with chronic illness, and faith-based encouragement on my blog, aboundinginhopewithlyme.com. You can also find me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel, hit the like button on this video, and leave a comment down below.